Amy, what is our fifth main topic today? This comes from Xerxes005. Hey, John and team. I was wondering if you saw the report from The Hollywood Reporter that Miguel uh, Sapochnik was stepping down as showrunner on House of the Dragon and also that Alan Taylor is coming on in season two to serve as an executive producer. How do you guys think this will affect the series moving forward? Thanks and bring on the filthy. All right. Thanks a lot for sending that in. And yesterday, news dropped showrunner of House of the Dragon, which to me has just come exploding out of the gate with its first two wonderful episodes uh, that has hooked me and got me so excited. Like just like the episode ends and I start an internal clock in my head, counting down to Sunday, counting down to Sunday for that next episode. What's Damon going to do next? Mm -hmm. uh, like what kind of weird mischief is he going to get? Little into? Scamp. <laughs> that little scam, that clown oh prince of crime <laughs> in Westeros. What's he going to do now? I, to then all of a sudden after two episodes hearing that the showrunner the co-showrunner is leaving one of the veterans of the original series as well is leaving that's startling this comes to us from the folks over at the hollywood reporter who wrote the following there's been a big shape uh shake up uh, inside the House of the Dragon, the HBO fantasy drama co-showrunner and director Miguel Shapotnik is stepping down from the freshly launched hit series. Sources say that Shapotnik uh, is exiting the show after pouring an exhausting three years of effort into the Game of Thrones prequel. Dragon co-creator Ryan Condal will now serve as the show's sole showrunner, he was the other co-showrunner, and continue to work closely with co-creator George R.R. R. Martin. Shapotnik will also... Uh, has also entered into a first look deal with HBO to develop new projects and will remain an executive producer for the duration of the series. The production has also hired acclaimed Thrones veteran Alan Taylor uh, to serve as an executive producer and to direct multiple episodes in season two. Okay, so they took one steady hand veteran of the franchise. He moves out. Another steady hand veteran of the franchise moves in and the co-showrunner is also staying there so it's not like the boat has totally been tipped over here i'll tell you what my minor panic when i first heard that after just two episodes this, this guy was leaving that miguel was leaving got settled a lot when something that i should have already had in my head came up in the article this guy's been working on this project for three years mm -hmm. for three years like in the mud in the, and a year of that is just all the behind the scenes wrangling and working and reworking the story, dealing with the studios and dealing with the executives and getting deals made and blah, 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 and struggling and wrestling with your writer's room and getting all this kind of stuff. And then you finally start shooting it. Then you're going through all the post-production, finally getting it to screen. It's been three years. And when you're creative like he is, once you've poured 100% of yourself into something for three years, you might be ready to move on. And I wouldn't doubt it at all if like, they're only announcing this now. I wouldn't doubt it all if, if, if it was understood that he had probably come to this decision probably six months ago. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. So again, a couple of things keep it from entering into panic territory. Number one, his co-showrunner is still there. Number two, they're bringing on more veteran help. This is clearly, he's going to stay on as an executive producer, probably won't be heavily involved, but still. So... I am loving this show, and while I kind I admit I kind of panicked at first when I read the headline, I actually feel pretty good about it right now. Amy, you know, this is a show you have not had a chance to start watching yet because mm -hmm. you've had some life stuff going on that we won't talk about here on the show. <laughs> but you've had some life stuff. Good, all good, all good. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, sorry, I just realized. Not since the diagnosis. Not, not no. since uh, <laughs> the incident. You know, since charges yeah. were filed. Right. You've been busy. Uh, <laughs> Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you think about the news and, and, and how panicked or not panicked should people be about this? You know, I, I agree. It, it really does just feel like there's a game plan in place here that that really is my takeaway of like it yeah it initially felt like a oh what but there's a game plan in place here you know presumably the the first season is wrapped and done and ever you know it's not like he's pulling out in the middle of production of the first season right no yeah this and, is long done and clearly there is a game plan of where he's moving to within the system who's stepping in to sort of fill in his place so i absolutely agree that this isn't really a huge cause for concern this is probably him going i spend a ton of time on this this you know I, I know they've said like he's moving into other projects he's probably seeing this as a big springboard for his career 
I, I think for him, it's a great move, and it, it seems like the show's not too rattled by it. You know what I would compare this to? Imagine they were saying they were doing a, another Avengers movie, and the Russo brothers were coming in to do it. But then we find out that Joe Russo had to step away. But Anthony Russo was still doing it, and James Gunn was coming in to work with him on it. Mm -hmm. And like, Anthony Russo got a, a separate deal with Disney. Yeah, I got yeah. a separate deal with <laughs> Disney, so there's nothing bad going on. I, I think everybody would be, oh, okay, 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 that's fine. Anyway, Chris, you, you've you been watching the show. You've been enjoying this I've been show. the show. What was your first reaction to seeing it, and how do you feel after reading like kind of the explanation? There was the little <gasps> moment first, right? But... Because he's staying on as an executive producer, we know there's no bad blood here. This has been a years long project in the making. So from a creative standpoint, from an creative endeavor, obviously you wanna go do something else after a while. You wanna stretch those wings, baby. Um, this is kind of like when you're watching Doctor Who and we go from Russell T Davies to Stephen Moffat, right? The show tonality might change, but I'm willing to give it a shot and see what other kind of stories we can tell within here, especially since we're dealing with such large time jumps and things. I also love that HBO really went on to say that Miguel was so integral in shaping this world, establishing its look, establishing this first season's tonality, and helping with just the building of Westeros at this point. Right. And I think having him still there, the other showrunners still around, and adding in people who are so familiar with this IP, we're just going to have some really cool stuff to look forward to. Season two is going to be very different. We're going to be telling a very different story. This is all Westeros history. So we've got a lot of different things to work with here. So I think it'll be fun to have some fresh blood in there. All right, guys. Oh, Ray. Yeah, I just want to point out, you, you watch the extras afterwards, right? After yes. the episode. Yeah. One of the telling things when I watch it is, if you look at the guys speaking, they look tired. Like, if you look at their faces, they look tired. <laughs> they kind of do. Let the man have a break. I'm pretty sure he has his baby, like, where he wants it. He's just going to let it, you know, let other people take care of it. You know, he wants to do other things. Yep, it could be as simple as that. Question is for you guys. What have you been thinking about House of the Dragon so far? I've been loving it. Maybe you've loved it too. Maybe you haven't. I don't know. Do you think this is going to really rock the boat or do you think not? Nah, it looks like they're keep keeping things pretty steady. Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Hey guys, we want to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Ryan Reynolds, and specifically his delightful company, Mint Mobile. So look, after years of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers, if we've learned anything is that there's always a catch. So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just $15 a month, I thought, what's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service, it all made sense. There isn't a catch. And guys, this is no joke. I have been using Mint Mobile for months now. And on top of the fact that I'm spending literally about one third every month of what I was spending on my former major carrier, I have discovered no decline in my service. I kept my phone number and I was able to keep my phone. The switch from my old service to Mint Mobile couldn't have been easier and saved me more money. And the best part for anybody who just hates their phone bills is that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All of their plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia. That's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia